What's going on my Jack brother, Coach Scott here. In today's video, I'm gonna share the details behind the three recent training splits that I have followed to get jacked, as well as the details of the training split that I just began following this month. This is in response to a great question that I received from Shiraz. Shiraz, hope I'm pronouncing your name correct there. He asked to see more training videos, as well as kind of the rationale behind the routines, the volume, the frequency that I follow. So I always appreciate the opportunity to share and discuss this topic here. If you have any questions that you'd like me to cover in future videos, please be sure to drop a comment down below and share them with me. So a little over six months ago during the months of November and December in the Jack at 40 Club, we were following a six workout pull push leg split where the first pull workout was focused on vertical pulling. First push workout was focused on chest with a bit of shoulders and triceps. First leg workout was focused on quadriceps with a little bit of hamstrings. Second pull workout was focused on horizontal pulling. Second push workout was focused on shoulders and triceps, just a little bit of chest. Second leg workout was focused on hamstrings with a bit of quadriceps. So a typical kind of high hybrid punish and prod approach that I like to take to my training splits. Now, just because it was a six workout plan doesn't mean you need to follow it six days per week. Some members did, some members followed it five days, some members followed it four days. It's all about suiting your lifestyle, your personal preferences, and paying attention to how your body recovers best and manages muscle damage and recovery best. So it's gonna be very personal to each individual and your lifestyle. So um, the volume is going to depend on how many days per week you're following this split. If you're following it six days per week, this split was roughly about 12 um, sets per muscle group per week. So a moderate training volume there. Um, if you were following it a few days per week, like four or five days per week, then you're hitting that 12 sets instead of every seven days, you're hitting 12 sets per muscle group every like eight or nine days, which is basically negligible. So again, just rolling with what suits your lifestyle best. That month of November, I actually followed it six days per week. I am used to, for the past few years, training about five days per week. It suited my lifestyle. I love training during the week and then having the weekends off to just do other activities that I enjoy and I thrive from. So, but I just thought, you know what, I'm gonna challenge myself. It's been a long time since I've trained six days per week. I wanted to see how I can handle it. And actually, I handle it quite well in regards to managing the muscle damage and recovery. It just happened to be a time in my life where I didn't have a lot of other things going on. So I'm like, all right, spend a little extra time in the gym. I love the atmosphere. I love the camaraderie. So I fed off of that, um, that opportunity. The advanced training technique, so although it's 12 sets, um, some of the exercises we threw in extended rest pause times three at the end. So really taking it beyond that point of momentary muscular failure in a safe, effective manner. For the month of December, close to the same um, volume. So we, I think we added in a, a set or two per muscle group. And again, depending on how many days per week you're following, it, it's gonna be every seven days or eight or nine days. So um, just increase the volume a little bit for most people. But for myself personally, I decided, you know what? I wanna try a few months of training four days per week. It's I've never trained four days per week. And I was hearing that from a lot of people over time, I've heard a lot where like for us men over 40, four days per week may be best for managing muscle damage and recovery. And I did have a lot going on during that time. I'm, right, I'm gonna do some other activity instead. I was taking up yoga. So I wanted to use that extra time to incorporate more yoga training into, into my lifestyle as well. So it really suited me at that time. So although the volume of that plan during the month of December increased slightly, I reduced my training days. So it kind of equated a little bit there. The advanced training technique we utilized that month was um, drop sets. So basically I, I've been following training splits for eight weeks at a time as of late. In the past, I've followed training splits upwards of like 16 weeks, just continued to progress on it. And I basically, like we kept most of the workout the same, maybe swapped out a couple isolation exercises uh, and then changed the advanced training technique just for, um, to keep the enthusiasm high and challenge your body in a slightly different way. Month of January, we changed that training split, but we rolled with a six workout plan once again. This time it was, the first workout was chest focus with a bit of back. Second workout was leg, legs with um, quadricep focus, a little bit of hamstrings. Third workout was shoulders with a bit of arms. Fourth workout was back with a little bit of chest. Fifth workout was hamstrings with a bit of quadriceps. Sixth workout was arms with a bit of shoulder. So again, punish and prod approach. That month we went with loaded stretching, which is great for increasing growth hormone as well as strengthening your tendons. So really love that and kept the volume. I think we lowered it just a little bit that month um, as a way of resensitizing our muscles to the training stimulus. So in the Jack Death 40 Club, we're typically gradually increasing our training volume and then we 
pull it back. And again, I continued to follow it for four days per week, so my volume was lower, but I found that I was giving a lot more focus and attention to each and every set I was getting. I, I really enjoyed that four training sessions per week. I was like amped up and ready to, to really crush it. Plus I think the yoga was a, a great compliment to it. So I was feeling really good and uh, really recovering incredibly well. The month of February continued to roll with that split. Again, keeping most of that training plan exactly the same, just swapping out a couple isolation exercises here and there. Uh, and the advanced training technique we used that month was extended rest pause set. So instead of rest pause times three, like we did in November, we went with disgusting, where you just keep going until you can only perform a single repetition. So rest pause, you, you complete your third set. So this is always after, after the third set of just a few select exercises, like one exercise per body part. So first two sets, you're resting normal, um, take your normal rest between. And after you complete that third set, rest for 10 seconds, do as many reps as you can. Rest for 10 seconds, do as many more reps as you can. Rest for 10 seconds, do as many more reps as you can. So rest pause times three, it's done. But with the extended rest pause, you just keep freaking going and make it as disgusting as you want it to be. Uh, so that was freaking awesome for the month of February. So again, following that split for eight weeks in total. And then we went for an upper lower push pull leg split where the upper and lower workouts were focused on strength. Um, so roughly like around that six rep range, which I find is great for, for a lot of us men over 49. Sometimes it's good to go a little bit lower than that, but I find for the most part, it can be a little bit tough on, on our joints for, for a lot of us. We step, we kept that, those strength focused workouts around that six rep range. And then the push pull leg workouts were hypertrophy focused. So more pump focused, eight to 15 repetitions, some exercises, maybe upwards of, of 20 repetitions where uh, those muscle groups tend to respond really well to that. Uh, man, for the first workout for, so for the month of March, I forget what our advanced training technique was. It might've been, no, oh, it was mechanical advantage supersets. So really, really love the, that technique through that in the mix there where you do an exercise like the, the cable fly. And as soon as you reach the point of momentary muscular failure with that, you keep the weight the same and you do the cable chest press because you're stronger with that movement. You can still continue burning the pecs out with the movement that you are stronger with without really changing the weight. So that is freaking awesome training technique that we absolutely love. So we, this is when we start ramping up the training volume. And the reason I like to change my training splits is because it's a great way of helping manage that training volume. When you're training with higher volume, you, the, the higher you increase your training volume, I find it's better to kind of spread out that training frequency across training that muscle group multiple times throughout the week. And then, uh, so I, I was again continuing four days per week with that upper lower push pull leg split, even though it was a five workout plan. So just continued to roll through that with in order. Uh, and I forget what the advanced training technique was for the month of April. It might have been drop sets again. I think it was drop sets again. We threw that into the mix there. And now for the next eight weeks, we're following a four workout body part split routine where workout number one, we're training chest with a bit of shoulders. So with any kind of chest pressing exercise, you're gonna get the shoulders involved as a secondary muscle group, especially the anterior delts. So you're not gonna need a lot of shoulder exercises in this workout. Workout number two, we're training back with a bit of rear delts. And again, with a lot of the back exercises, the rear delts are involved. So it's not like you need a lot of rear delt exercises in this workout. Workout number three, we're freaking crushing legs. And workout number four, we're training arms. So biceps are involved as a secondary muscle group on the back workout, triceps as a secondary muscle group in the chest workout. So they're getting worked twice um, in this four workout split. Also training abs uh, in each workout, one ab exercise, one calf exercise with each of these workouts. So uh, low volume, but high frequency throughout the week. And again, not following a calendar week. If you're following training four days per week, all right, you're, you're just rolling through those workouts in order. If you're training five days per week, you're going to hit those muscles more frequently. So basically looking at about nine sets for most muscle groups uh, with this workout every four to five days. So if you're taking a little bit of rest in there, uh, if you do like two on, one off, it's gonna be nine sets every like five days that you're training that muscle group. So again, not following that calendar week. I am back up to five days per week. Actually, right now, I'm just rolling with it week to week. You don't have to follow it exactly the same every single week. You don't have to tell yourself, I'm training five days per week this week, like every single week. Sorry, this week, if I can only train four days, I train four days. This week, if I'm like, my schedule is pretty clear. I feel freaking awesome. I'm recovering great. I'm gonna train six days per week. It's, it's okay, it's great to just kind of follow a plan that allows you to 
train free, as frequent or infrequent as you desire. Um, and with this training split, there's no advanced training techniques. We're just going straight sets all the way through again, lower volume, kind of using this as an opportunity to, for our muscles to resensitize to the training stimulus, our, our, our body to recover more, the fatigue to dissipate from our muscles. So I am absolutely freaking loving this training split right now, thriving from it. And when it comes to training volume in general. Like I see so many people focus on, on the research that it's gotta be between 10 and 20 sets if you wanna experience muscle gains. But like those studies, were those subjects similar to you, to your age, to your training experience, stature, how and how you train? How did those people perform each of those sets? If they said they left like one rep in reserve for each of those sets, was it a true one rep in reserve or cause like we're terrible at gauging where we actually reach that point of momentary muscular failure. So I find the more sets that you perform close to that momentary muscular failure, the fewer sets that you have to do. So actually at this point, this stage in the game, one of the reasons I also wanted to drop down to the body part split routine right now to reduce cause it's a lower uh, volume training phase is because I want to shorten up my workouts as well. Spend, less time in the gym, like 45 to 60 minutes, but like freaking all out effort. Like giving it the best that I've got during that time, get in, get out. Whereas like, I find a lot of people who are like focused on, I gotta do the uh, 10 to 20 sets per muscle group per week. And they're doing these longer type workouts. They're like pacing themselves throughout the workout. And there's not like, when you look at the total effective reps throughout the training session, like a lot of times like the lower volume training plan where you're doing fewer sets if you're gauging volume in regards to um, the number of sets that you're performing per week. Some of the people who are performing fewer sets can end up having more total effective reps and sets than the people who are training with like even sometimes twice the amount of volume. So it's that's the one thing that I am really kind of paying attention to lately is just not getting caught up in a lot of the sciencey freaking research out there, the evidence-based approach and just like given it. I know there's a lot of like talk of, again, like if you're training to failure, training, the closer you train to failure, the, the more recovery you're going to need. And is it that much more beneficial to push it to failure? Um, you gotta be, again, it's something that you need to pay attention to yourself. You have to have that heightened sense of awareness, pay attention to your recovery. And we're not talking like crushing, like I'm talking about momentary muscular failure, not like grinding it out and like forcing, like having a workout partner force every single set. Um, cause that can, that can be <laughs> quite exhausting. Uh, but again, you wouldn't need many sets in order to achieve the, the desired outcome there as well. So those are the things that I've been playing around with my training splits as of late. So that's a breakdown of the training splits that I have followed in recent months to get jacked. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please do me a favor and smash that thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate it. If you want some more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that alert button so you're notified each time I upload a video. If you know a fellow bro who would benefit from watching today's video, please do me a favor and share it with them. More than anything, I'd love to hear from you down in the comment section below. Share your thoughts, share your insights, share your feedback, share the splits that you've been following to get jacked. And if you want me to share a complete workout uh, in one of my upcoming videos, let me know down in the comment section below. And before you go, don't forget to download your free guide, Jacked After 40. Have yourself an amazing day. Catch you in the next video.